the Trey Shadow Garden and Victoria's official appearance. We're gonna get a little bit of more Eminence in Shadow Season 2 cut content from Anime Room Pie. Let's go. For a majority of the Eminence in Shadow series, we would often experience the world and story through the eyes of the crazy sociopath Sid Kageno. That's why it's easy to forget that this world and its people don't revolve around his delusion. <laughs> That is so BM that the author, af this is after the fake I'm Atomic happened and Iris is on her fucking knees. Because she just had her fucking legendary flame artifact here. She was doing 2v1 against Shadow, but then Shadow still beat their ass with her fucking, you know, uh, 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 what's the bar? A fucking crowbar. And then you're gonna show me her gat like this? This is just, come on, this is just horrendous. ...and suffer from real consequences. Princess Rose Oriana is one such character, having murdered her own father, the king of the Oriana kingdom, was branded as a traitor and now she is constantly haunted by her father's death. So with the re- I low-key think that she should kill his, her mom too. You know what? You know what? We might- we killed the dad. Why don't we just end it too? Just kill the mom too. And I want you guys to notice something, okay? Look at the hair. Last episode, someone made a very good, great comment that I should have also mentioned in the episode reaction. Look at Oriana's curls here. The front curls are cut because obviously Lambda, I think, I did Lambda cut it? I'm not sure, but her hair was cut between the regular Oriana versus the Shadow Garden, you know, Roku Roku Roku. But you'll notice that in the previous episode of the Eminence in Shadow, her hair suddenly became longer as she joined back to Lord Perv Asset. People were like, what the fuck? What's going on here? Like, is this a minor detail? Well, how did her curls return? And then someone mentioned, actually, because Rose doesn't wear her slime suit anymore, the slime suit is stored in her hair. So I'm like, you know what? This is actually feasible. The slime definitely can do that. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but the, ex the, the hair extension, it's the slime. It's the slime armor. Recent episode 9, we'll be finding out more about Rosa's internal conflict along with some other aspects as well, like what Sid is doing in the Oriana Kingdom, and the full introduction of Victoria, also known as number 559. It goes without saying, there will be spoilers for people who haven't watched the episode yet, so here's a spoiler warning just in case. That's fine, we're and on episode 11 now. If you enjoy this breakdown slash cut content video, be sure to, know what to like do. and feel free to subscribe to the channel as well. It Guys, a lot. like the video, then, sub to his channel. Episode 9 is titled The Key and it covers the prologue of the Volume 4 light novel. To start, we see Rose having a recur- That fucking Volume 4 light novel is such spoilers. ...during nightmare because the guilt of killing her father was still haunting her, and the light novel actually gives a better insight on her emotional trauma as compared to the anime. Basically, she could still remember the feeling of a blade piercing through her father, and her trauma Oof. was caused by the fact that she doesn't know whether or not her actions were justified, and that if her father actually approved of the path she took. Regardless, when Rose wakes up, she has called by 664 and 665 for their next mission, also, the episode actually changes the location they were staying in because in the light novel, they had stayed at the Shadow Garden base located in the Oriana Kingdom, whereas oh. here, they stayed at Mary's Inn, which was located in First Castle Town, although- I still feel terrible for making the comment about her panic color there while she was having a nightmare. That's the fucking worst timing, but I wanted them to like, you know, meet Sid, like at least, um, in First Castle Town, these two. Although, uh, I want these two to, they, they did meet Sid, but they didn't know, right? Because can you truly say that they're true Shadow Garden members that they didn't know that their master was right beside? It's interesting that Rose never encountered Sid, who was also staying here. 665 is actually the best. She's, she's great. I think she might be one of my favorite members. Yeah. And if you did not know, Mary was the same prostitute that Shadow had rescued from Goose yeah. back in episode 1. Anyways. Why are they... I, I'm surprised that they're still giving detail to Mary because like at the end of season two or no, no, no. I think it was the, um, in the Lawless City arc, we meet Mary, we save her. And then near the end of the arc, we see Mary in a train actually leaving the town. And I, I mistakenly thought Sherry Barnett. No, it wasn't Sherry Barnett. But then what actually happens after is then we get to see Mary in the bar again. So it's like, hold up. Wait. Is she a recurring character intentionally, or is this just like a very minor reappearance just to give a little homage to the first season? That's the first arc. I'm not sure. The anime removed some minor exposition from Rose as well. For instance, she was amazed at the technological advancements of Shadow Garden and even goes on to briefly explain how the numbers were organized by having their strength and rank reflecting their assigned number. But if you're interested in learning more about Shadow Garden, we know that one. check out this video where I explain the many aspects of the organization itself. I think we watched it. I'm not completely sure. Maybe we watched the Annie News video about now, it. Now to continue, Rose being frustrated about her abilities to save her people and kingdom, despite becoming stronger in Shadow Garden, was also removed from the episode. It would have been nice if they kept this because it provides some perspective on the mental state of Rose and how self-conscious she is about her own strength. 
That said, Rose and the team would meet with 559 at Fort First, but before their meeting, 664 will go on to explain how impressive this panel is always nice. I keep seeing this used by other creators. It's like casual clothing, Oriana and 665 and 664. It's so nice. 559 was being able to defeat number 89 in battle considering the ranking disparity. So who is 89? Have we ever seen number 89? But this is obviously the promotion, the path to promotion, right? If you want to become like, if you want to go from like an unnamed number to like a named number, you need to like defeat like a double digits character or you have to also be like, promoted by uh one of the seven which right now epsilon is the one that is i guess responsible for victoria but in the light novel rose was actually present when 559 was fighting 89 really? so having 664 explaining it to rose just felt weird but moving on they will meet with 559 okay in the manga though this is the same sandwich girl that we just saw by the way 664 looks pretty much the same so does victoria why the fuck is 665 so fucking stacked out of nowhere here? This is like, wait, what? Did she actually always look like that? I don't think so, bro. Based on what I've seen from 665, that is not what she looks like. And later that night, and most of the conversation along with 559 explaining the details of the upcoming mission pretty much followed the light novel. Also, what do you guys think of 559 or Victoria? I personally found her almost Yandere-like and sadistic character yes. to be quite interesting, although I did not like her behavior towards Rose. Let me know. I think her behavior towards Rose, is it justified? Maybe if you think it from the context of like strict like, military operations and the fact that she did turn her back against her comrades. But again, I think we've talked about this multiple times. It was a fuck up from the leadership to even have Rose there, right? You gotta be aware of her mental state and the fact that her mom is there. Like, it's her fucking kingdom. Like, what are you doing? And then the fact that she attacks her mom. Now that we know more details about the mother, right? It's pretty funny. But <laughs> because she's getting her cheeks clapped by Perv Asset, who I think doesn't even want to clap those cheeks. He sounds fucking borderline annoyed. But <clears throat> what Victoria did, eh, kind of fucked up. It makes sense, though. I think she's like a Yandere character. She, I need more of her. It was nice to see her get Moe in the last episode where she's like feeding Sid, you know, f you know fucking, she had like a plate of frozen, like fr fruit in a fucking, uh, uh, in, in like a fridge just ready for Sid. And I'm like, okay, she's also super simple. Of course she is. You know your own opinions on her in the comment section down below. In any case, when the mission started, a brief sequence where Rose internally reflecting how considered she was in thinking that she could save her people and realizing she was just another one of the grants within Shadow Garden was removed from the anime. Again, this self-reflection would have provided such a better insight on the character's emotional and mental state if the episode kept this minor detail. Is she another random grunt? I don't think so. Even though she might consider herself weak, isn't her party like 664, 665, 666? Aren't they considered like an elite group already? Because in the John Smith arc, Alpha was the one that actually sent that party over to the train too, right? Because this party was actually, um, they were kind of popping off. Even in the Lala City, they were there too, and they pretty much like succeeded. They did pretty well. I think this party, this group at least, is like the most recognizable from the unnamed numbers. Not that we've already seen other number, other unnamed number groups. But I digress, when it was revealed what was hidden within the ruins of Fort First, the anime keeping to their own aesthetic choices when it comes to things related to the cult, even having Rose outright acknowledging the altar and recognizing it as being similar the to the sanctuary was a nice attention to detail. Now there were also some changes made to Queen Reina's arrival. Yeah, her fucking her size of her ass. Also, she just looks evil here. In the manga, she looks so different. Well, there's mainly the detail that Shadow Garden had apparently informed Rose her family has been safely evacuated from the kingdom by the anti plus faction. That's why when Rose saw her mom Her mom already got evacuated by the anti perf faction, yet she's still here. She, don't tell me she's here of her own volition. No. Mother, she was surprised and even no. started to question whether her mother was somehow captured by the perfection or did Shadow Garden lie to her. I'm or did she go here voluntarily because of the luxuries and the riches that Lord Perv Asset was spoiling? There's no shot, right? But in the anime, if you look at it, there's a gross amount of like luxury products, like a lot of fancy dresses, clothing, stuff like that in her room when she's doing her makeup. I'm pretty sure that's all this shit that Lord Perv Asset bought for the mom so that she would leave him alone because she sounds a little bit annoying and kind of a like clingy, right? There's no way. Unfortunately, Rose did not have the time to process. Shadow Garden just straight up lied to her. <laughs> that's, 
<laughs> That's kind of fucked up. They should've just lie, and then they send Rose on this mission where they'll meet the mom. What the fuck, yo? Who organized this mission? That's the reveal, because the cow retrieved a ring from the altar, thanks to Queen Reyna. And the anime actually added the detail of the ring belonging to the human hero Freya, one of oh, the three okay. heroes that defeated the demon Diablos. Now we have two heroes out of the three recognized, right? We have the human hero Freya, we have the elf hero, uh... Who is she again? It's the, it's the one that looks like Alpha. I forgot the name. Olivier, that's the one. That's right, Yellow Master. And then the beast hero, it's not Shiva. I thought it was Shiva. It's actually not Shiva. The one that was mentioned by, I think, Getan in the flashback, or was it Yukime? They're the demon Diablos. Thus, Victoria orders them to engage the Chaos forces, but both 664 and Rose objected for different reasons. 664 was worried because the enemies outnumbered them 10 to 1, while Rose feared for the safety of her mother, but Victoria simply ignores them and Yeah, I don't give a battle. fuck about your mom. And the following battle was removed from the episode, like how Victoria had easily cut down 9 of the first children before attempting to kill Queen Reyna. Also, instead of Rose dragging her mother away just before the attack lands, in the episode, Rose manages to block Victoria's yeah, she attack, did. which was definitely- And then- it shows her mom's gat. Like, why does she got the BBL? Did, like, fucking... Did Lord Pervasa buy the BBL for mom, too? Why is the mom so cheeked up, bro? Really more impressive. Another aspect that wasn't shown was how Rose and her mother would be tied up and then taken away by the counters, while Victoria okay. 664 and 665 became surrounded by enemies, which we'll come back to later. But they fought for fucking the three kingdom, days. And we get an anime original sequence involving Gamma receiving a report from New about the progress of the team they sent to fought first and the apparent betrayal of number 666. We even get a look at how Gamma decorates her room and it seems- <laughs> There was a Sid plushie too, right? That she- Why is there- This is an interesting design. You have like, flower, but in a cage. This is fancy. Really likes plushies. And some key details from this sequence was Gamma mentioning that Shadow Garden has been interfering with the cow's attempts to investigate and steal artifacts from ancient ruins. She also mentions that Modred, Modred. the seed of rounds, has been secretly controlling the Orianna Kingdom from- Now this guy, he is the one that we're gonna fight? Is that what's gonna happen? Like, cause I don't think Lord Perv Asad can fight. Who's actually gonna fight us? Maybe- Well then again, Perv Asad was talking like Mordred wasn't anything. Cause like, Perv Asad also has ulterior plans, right? When he was thinking of like talking and monologuing about with the ring in the box, I can do anything. I don't even need Mordred. He's like, fuck Mordred. I don't need that guy. But I think Mordred's probably going to be the guy that we, we like fight. If, if there is going to be like a flashy fight to end the season. Yeah, obviously everyone's going to get clapped, love. Like obviously, like now you're just spoiling me. Well, you're not really spoiling me. Cause this is just like, like, let's get serious. Like who the fuck's gonna fight Shadow and actually stand up, right? Like everyone's gonna get bodied easily, but we still need a spectacle in sight, right? We still need a fight. And the only candidate left right now, I think is Mordred. Unless my man fucking Kevin comes back to take Margaret away from Shadow. We'll see. From behind the scenes and the attempts of forcing him out have failed. Additionally, it seems that Perth Asset has been expanding a large number of his forces to stop Shadow Garden from interfering, and with the growing unrest in the kingdom, security around the capital has greatly weakened, making it easier to infiltrate. Another detail was that Lambda has apparently been training more numbers for combat, so the That's anime right. might be hinting at the final confrontation between Shadow Garden and Modra's forces. The last thing is how Gamma along with Shadow Look, you got Piplup here, and you have Shadow. <laughs> Garden were again assuming that everything, including Rose's betrayal, have been preordained by the Master Shadow. With that, we finally see what Sid has been doing on his journey of self-discovery, and apparently, he has been staying Nothing. at Mary's Inn. It was also interesting how he seems to be reflecting on his eminence in Shadow routine, even acknowledging that he never really had a clear image on what he wanted to do. This is probably the first time he has been so self-aware about his whole Shadow persona. Hmm. Nevertheless, much of the interaction that Sid had with Mary- I thought his like, um... Mental crisis of, oh, what should the Amazon Shadow be? Is this really right? I, th I thought that whole point was, was to kind of like push. It's like an easy way to push into a direction of saving Oriana. Because then she started to, he started to talk about like tyrannical queen. What kind of role should I play in this whole thing? I thought that's what was going on. It was somewhat similar with the light novel, but the anime still made some creative changes. For example, it wasn't mentioned in the episode, but Sid did find Mary familiar, although he quickly dismisses the thought. So he didn't even know. Like, like, I, I, I thought he was at least aware that this is the girl that I saved from the lawless city and that, and that he's, and then she's back here. Cause she is very aware. Well, she knows who Shadow is. She doesn't know who Sid is. 
But Sid doesn't know who Mary is. That's fucking crazy. Oh, also, even though the anime made that's crazy coincidence that whatever Sid was thinking out loud fitted Mary's dialogue, but in the light novel, he did this intentionally to pretend that he was paying attention. In the following sequence, Sid starts to contemplate about his next routine and the idea of factional disputes between two opposing forces fighting for power had intrigued him, so he decides to help make Rose into the new ruler. This basically followed the light novel, even the part where he misunderstood her intentions. This is supposed to be the tyrant queen, <laughs> Oriana right here with the curls, I see her. Thinking she wants to steal the throne for herself and become a tyrant. However, his planning was interrupted by soldiers, and much of what happened afterwards went accordingly to the light novel, although I have to commend Sid for his Oscar-worthy performance. Yeah, the mob I found it crazy that Sid still showed admiration for the soldiers, thinking they were true nimbles like him, and even saying that he couldn't let them outdo him. Having said that, after Mary thanks Sid for protecting her, he would leave the inn and start his mission to make Rose into a tyrant which was completely original to the anime. Although oh. the two additional scenes of him going to jail and joining a volunteer army were actually taken from the web novel, and the reason this was added was- Oh? Wow, this is thumbnail material too. Because the director was a fan of the web novel. In any case, I won't be going into too much detail on what happened, so if you want to read more about these two storylines, I'll leave links to the web novel down below. I almost feel like that could be a completely separate, like, OVA episode. Like, Eminence in Shadow OVA could be a prison arc, right? It'd be a nice OVA. Now, for the prison storyline, Sid actually ended up in prison because when he was exploring the Oriana Kingdom, soldiers from the Perth Asshat faction suspected that he was a spy and not wanting his mob cover blown. Sid willingly surrendered. And during his time inside the prison, he What kind of prison feeds you fucking triple-A steak like this? What? <laughs> Wine also? What's going on here in the prison arc? He's an individual named Zack, and he basically threatened Zack to Zach? bring him meals, and it was actually shown in the episode. In addition to that, Sid would make- <laughs> Zack became Sid's bitch, and <laughs> Zack is the one bringing these steaks in. Okay. Clara Oriana in the web novel, the oh. younger sister of Rose was actually the one that led the revolt what? inside the prison camp, but obviously- What? Oriana's a sister? Clara Oriana. What? Is, it, is this spoilers? I mean, the existence of a character is not really a spoiler. If anything, this makes me really anticipate it. Is she ever going to show? What's she doing right now? Had a revolt inside the prison camp, but obviously in the episode, she doesn't exist, so the prison break likely happened in a different manner. Hmm. That said, for the volunteer army storyline, Sid had joined because- Goldie and Quentin are fucking leading this volunteer army, dude. Like, what's going on? Okay, do you see this, guys? Holy shit, I just realized. This guy right here? You yeah, Look at me, right? You have Shadow here. This guy, this guy, this guy. Same face. Copied and pasted with different hair colors and different colors of armor. Again, this guy to the left, this guy to the right, and this guy to the furthest right here. All same pasted faces and it's not over yet. No, no, no. Are you ready? This guy right here. This guy right here. And you can tell by the nose and the way that it's cut off. This guy right here. <laughs> They're being so lazy. And then... They conveniently cut out the faces of like people here, no, right over here by Quentin's bald ass head, right? So that they don't have to like put in the effort of having new faces. Holy shit, this is so lazy. I mean, this is like a frame, right? This is like a single frame that was used to explain the prison break arc, but god damn. It's the same fucking face, dude. Because he thought it would be fun and they were offering rewards as well. But because the army was full of useless peasants, it turned out to be a complete disaster when they fought against the perfection like we see in the episode. Also regarding the legend Sid recreated, he essentially wanted to have the underdog suddenly defeat the enemy forces, so he decided okay. to empower three middle-aged men with his <laughs> magic. And remember three that middle aged men quite significant in the history of the Oriana Kingdom. Yes, yeah, like the weapon, right? His magic as black patterns, which was why there was an image of a black rose on the right hand of the tree oh. man. But is Oriana gonna do something like that? I, like, I, I don't know. She'll like put her hand out and then, and then it'll start glowing. Like, I don't, doesn't like Claire also have something like that in her hand now too when she activates Aurora? Anyways, like. This is what leads to Black Rose. Maybe, okay, this is pretty funny. The middle age man gets the Black Rose-like powers, yeah. But because this was apparently a new technique he developed, <gasps> Look he at underestimated them. the potential of his empowerment and the three men decimated much of the Pearl forces while taking all the credit. That's why Sid was complaining in the episode. 
Anyways, Sid contemplated about his next move and he'll encounter the soldiers that stole from Mary again, but unlike the light novel where he confronted them immediately in the act. What the fuck am I watching here, bro? Why is there smoke? Because, like, what does this imply? I think a lot. I, I, I think it's straight up just like his, he, he got his ass kicked. Like, you know the thing. He got his ass kicked in a fight. So, if you get your ass kicked really hard, maybe the friction from the kick would leave some kind of smoking residue. But look at this shit. This just looks so bad. Why is his face down ass up like this after encountering three men in the alleyway? Anyway, this happened later because the prior mini storyline had occurred over the course of two to three days. Also, the way Sid killed the soldiers in the episode was more tame because in the light novel, he essentially ripped out their hearts. And his yeah. line of the strongest guy is I am right justice in both versions. And this is probably his most- But you two poor motherfucker. <laughs> Why did he have to dick trap that we're poor? But you poor motherfuckers don't have anything to offer, so this much will do. Takes out your heart. I am justice, our protagonist. Savage line yet? Additionally, another difference was the fact that Sid only went to fought first in the episode because he heard there were treasures around the area, but in the light novel, he went there because he was intrigued about the idea of a fortress and ruins. Now, in the anime, we see Sid delivering the gold coins he collected to Mary first before going to Fort first, but in the light novel, it happened afterwards. So when Mary finds the gold coins, she even catches a glimpse of Shadow annoying him. Shadow Summer! He's definitely waiting for her before swiftly leaving because he did say he wanted to do a better entrance and exit move than those soldiers. Also, the anime doesn't actually explain why Sid gave her the money, but the light novel- Cause like, Sid doesn't know who Mary is! Even though he saved her once! He doesn't remember, so giving the money to this girl here, well, maybe it's because she was treating him nice at the end, and maybe he wanted to realize that she was maybe tight for cash. I mean, she obviously was. I mean, the, the three bandits, like, broke into her place and tried to demand money, so it makes sense. Nova did somewhat mention that he remembered he still had to pay for his apple juice, so that okay. might be the reason. Wow. With that kind so all that gold coin for apple juice, okay. However, we return to Fort first, and it was revealed that Victoria 664 and 665 have been fighting the Cubs forces for three consecutive days Jeez. and nights. Although it's three days and nights is insane. When we saw them, their arms were cut off. Holy shit! That both 664 and 665 have already fallen, and this wasn't explicitly mentioned in the episode. But Victoria had managed to kill roughly a hundred enemies with Koido, wow. the Gil Wind being the only enemy left. However, she was also at her limit and she was easily knocked down by Kaido, but before he kills her, Shadow arriving to save her happened in a somewhat different manner from the light novel. Mm -hmm. To explain, Shadow would heal Victoria completely, even regenerating her left arm, which allowed- I really wanted that to be like Victoria's power. I completely forgot about um, I'm Recovery Atomic. That wasn't Recovery Atomic, but you know, Shadow can heal. ...to swiftly slice everything from Kaido's anchor down to ribbons. And fearing for his life, they tried to escape, but unlike in the light novel Ooh. where he was killed by Shadow, Victoria Wait. was the one that killed Kaido yeah. in that. Okay, this is an exact copy of the Oriana scene when she got her powers, but Shadow came and killed, you know, Kaido. That's actually an honor to get killed by Shadow directly from the manga. In the light novel where he was killed by Shadow, Victoria was the one that killed Kaido in the episode. Also, Shadow in the light novel would mention that he killed 664 and 665 as well because he saw them hanging out with Rose, which Best girl. means that he probably knows that Rose is in Shadow Garden. Having said that, Shadow will arrive to meet with Victoria, but the anime actually left out a lot of details regarding this interaction. For starters, the episode removed the part where Sid recalls his first meeting with Victoria Why have they... he found her a Why have they not specifically mentioned her name yet? That's why I still hold off on calling her Victoria in my anime reactions, right? But in the manga, she, he immediately calls her, if I recall her name, her name is Victoria, right? Year ago during his usual cross-country adventures, because Victoria had demon possession, Sid decided to cure her and leave her with Alpha. Furthermore, Sid describing his initial- This is crazy because this is Victoria from the past. She was like completely different. She was like a- what's the word? Like a- almost cult-like devotion towards God. She was like a woman of God. And then she just did a complete polar opposite and now God is Shadow. And interesting that Zeta is here. I know that Zeta and Victoria also went on a mission together in the beginning for the initial scouting, but clearly in the background story of what, whenever Victoria was still elected, Zeta was involved, and I guess she was, I don't know, involved in how Victoria was recruited into Shadow Garden. She impressions on her was removed as well, because Victoria apparently used to be quite a... T yeah, she's a saint and a prophet. Did she prophesy that Shadow would show up and save her? Timid girl, and seeing her fight here really surprised him. Another aspect removed from the episode was Sid thinking that Victoria has done something illegal, and because she was embarrassed of admitting this, he assumed a story about the Cult of Diablos was just a cover-up. 
Then Victoria would go on to explain the situation to Shadow, but in the light novel, just behaving in a cuter manner, tugging on his coat, which... Yeah, this Gatmo is cute, right? Because you see the cold, ruthless Victoria saying, fuck your mom, Rose, I'm about to kill her right now. And then she turns all, ooh, woo, just dead it, dead it whenever Shadow shows up. Apparently, she used to do this all the time whenever she wanted to tell him something. And regarding <laughs> her report, he followed much of the... Look at this face, dude, it's a complete opposite. Light novel, although the anime had more emphasis on the animosity between Victoria and 664 when they were Whoa, you see that? You see that? 664 is the one most upset, right? Because I think she's mentioned, that's our friend. How could you do that to our friend? It's nice to see that 664 and 665 has our back. Our as an Oriana's back. Between Victoria and 664 when they were talking about Rose's betrayal. I also found it funny that Shadow basically assumed <laughs> what? this was all the corporate issues of Mitsugoshi. And Employee ID? 666? What the fuck are you talking about? And he said that he was tired. And he's right! There's no way we can remember 600 people. That's why they only show us the seven shades. And then they show us from the name numbers, there's 8 to 25. Who did they show? They show us Omega Kai and Lambda. And Nui, right? Those four. And then the rest of the hundreds and hundreds of unnamed numbers. We don't know any of them. Well, we do know Victoria, Oriana, 664 to 665. That's pretty much it, right? So if you think about it, the organization is a lot smaller of the ones that we see anyways. ...of this routine. Now, besides that, Shadow's Fury was actually more exaggerated in the anime, and it was funny how Victoria, 665 and 665, assumed that it was towards the betrayal of Rose, but in reality, she was simply frustrated that after giving Rose all that power and seeing her kill her father, mm. she was giving up on everything and that it would ruin his eminence in Shadow routine. Again, if this is an indication of how crazy Sid is, then I don't know what is because his priority was his routine, not the fact that Rose was being forced to marry Perv again. I mean, Shadow is playing his own game, you know, he, he, I, I, he is gonna help out, but it is kind of fucked up if you really think about what he is thinking in that moment. Oh. Reused animation though from the Oriana fight. If you don't believe me, trust me. Go watch the Oriana scene where she gets the power from Shadow. But yeah, identical soundtrack too, by the way. Another great video from Anime Roompa giving us more context about um, the cut content from Anderson Shadow. This video actually covers something that Annie News didn't cover, which was the prison arc, right? Annie News also did mention the existence of the prison arc, but he actually went into detail about what happened. Pretty funny. I think that this prison arc could be a very fun OVA episode if they ever decide to pursue it.